Force Diagrams. Project by Caitlin Morris, Nick Butler, David Ingold, Caitlin Rayneck, and Matt Harris. Components of Force Diagrams. Today we'll be teaching you about the forces used in Force Diagrams. First of all, we have the force of gravity, which acts downward upon the object. The next force that we'll be learning about is natural force, which works in the upward direction and counteracts the force of gravity. The next force we'll be learning about today is force of tension. This force acts as a pull in any direction. For example, it could be in this direction, this direction, this direction, or even this direction. Whatever direction you feel like. The next force that we'll be learning about is applied force. Applied force is when something, another force, pushes on the object, as in applying a force. Now, applied force can be in this direction, this direction, this direction, even this direction. Pretty much any direction you want to choose. The next force we'll be learning about is force of friction. Now first you have to notice that the natural force in this case isn't going straight up. It's going a little to the side because the surface that the block is on isn't parallel to the ground. Meaning the block will slide in this direction unless you have a force called friction. Acting in this direction, parallel to the ground, keeping it in its place. How to draw force diagrams. When drawing force diagrams, there will be two types, either constant velocity or constant acceleration. There will be, if it's constant velocity, the net force will equal zero in the x or y direction. See how they're equal to each other? If it's constant acceleration, the net force will not equal zero, and one end will be longer than the other. Hi, my name is Matt Harris, and I'm going to tell you about axis tilting. The only reason you would ever tilt the axis is if you have an inclined plane where the f of n and f of f are not on the x and y axis. To tilt the axis, you just put the axis on the f of n and the f of f vectors. Then you only have f of g as your only triangle open to be solved. The block lies motionless on the ramp. Given the info in the picture, what's the frictional force keeping the block from sliding? For gravity, use 10 meters per second squared. Alright, the first thing we do is we draw our force diagram. We know that we have f of n, which lies perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. We also have the force of friction lying parallel against the block falling on the ramp so that it doesn't move. We also know that gravity always points downwards To find our gravity, we take 7 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, and we get 70 newtons for gravity. Now we tilt our axis so that gravity is the only triangle that we have to work with. And we know that since the angle of the ramp is 45, the angle in the triangle is 45 as well. We take sine of 45 equals x over 70. Which means 70 sine 45 equals 49.5 newtons. And that goes right here on the x portion of the gravity triangle. 
Now, as we set up our F net equation, we have F net x equals the force of friction plus the force of gravity, all equal to zero. Because once again, the block is motionless. Now we do know that we just found the x portion of gravity, which is 49.5 newtons. So now we have F net x is equal to the force of friction plus 49.5, excuse me, equal to zero. All we do is subtract 45 to the other side, and we get F of force of friction is negative 49.5 newtons. And that is how you use force diagrams. This has been a project by Caitlin Morris, Nick Butler, Caitlin Raynack, David Ingold, and Matt Harris. Thanks for watching. The end.